Mother's Day, first of all, to all of the ladies here. This, this last night, my uh, son gave my wife a gift and uh, we got to see our newest grandson for the first time on Zoom. They're in California, so that was kind of fun to be able to have her have a Mother's Day gift like that. Our, as is tradition, I, my Glenwood Canyon report is very simple. I saw a lot of cars from other states um, traveling. It looks like RVs and people with those boxes on top. So it looks like uh, the summer travel season has begun in Glenwood, Glenwood Canyon. Uh, once again, I am recording our worship. So if I talk this direction to the camera, it's because I'm going to say something to the people who watch it. There are people who prefer still to come to worship online. So the website is coloradoworship.online and I usually have it up in the middle of the afternoon after I get home and process it. So hello everyone out there. Let's turn our hearts towards worship. God the Father, in Jesus Christ, you calm the troubled waters. You nourish us and enclose us in safety. You call us forth and send us out. In lush and barren places, you are with us. You have become our salvation. Now breathe upon us and awaken your church once more. Claim us again as your beloved and holy people. Quench our thirst, cleanse our hearts, wipe away every tear. To you, our beginning and our end, our shepherd and lamb, be honor, glory, praise, and thanksgiving, now and forever. Amen. Please stand as you are able for our first opening hymn, which is number 638 in our red hymn books.
remain standing as we turn to page 184 in the red hymnal. That's not the hymn number, that's the page number for the Kyrie. still waters. You restore my soul, O Lord, and guide me along right pathways for your name's sake. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, and my cup is running over. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The word of the Lord. Our gospel acclamation is on page 188. Please rise as you are able.
Gospel is from the book of John, 10th chapter, verses 22 through 30. At that time, the festival of the dedication took place in Jerusalem. It was winter, and Jesus was walking in the temple in the portico of Solomon. So the Jews gathered around him and said to him, How long will you keep us in suspense? If you are the Messiah, tell us plainly. Jesus answered, I have told you, and you do not believe. The works that I do in my Father's name testify to me, but you do not believe because you do not belong to my sheep. My sheep hear my voice. I know them, and they follow me. I give them eternal life, and they will never perish. No one will snatch them out of my hand. What my Father has given me is greater than all else, and no one can snatch it out of the Father's hand. The Father and I are one. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. Once again, to facilitate um, my filming so that uh, they can see it at home, I don't go over to the podium over here. I'll do everything from here. I wanted to read to you in Greek that last verse, John chapter 10, verse 30, which is, I and the Father are one in Greek, and uh, Carl, forgive me if my Greek isn't quite up to snuff. Ego kai ho pater hen esmen. Now I always thought it's neat to hear what it was written in in the original language sometime, but I found something interesting when I was preparing for this week, and I'll get to that for a minute. But the, um, the word hen, which for English sounds like a chicken, but actually is the word one, but not quite. I'll get to that in a minute. If you consider the, the history of humanity before Christ, we struggled to understand God. We were shooting in the dark. We were unsure. We felt disconnected from the Creator. God understands this, and He did something. We could not rise, and we cannot rise to meet Him. So He descended in human form with all of our frailties to be with us. I and the Father are one. Part of the meaning of this statement is lost in translation from Greek to English. That's why I decided to read it to you in Greek. The Greek word for one, which is hen, does, isn't really that we are the same person. It says we are in unity. We are joined. We are connected. We are completely in agreement. Jesus is claiming that he and God are unified as one. God showed unity, unity seems to be the word this week, with us by walking among us. Think about what I'm saying here. He understands our struggles when we're sick or hungry or alone. If you think of all the times in the New Testament, Jesus prayed, he cried, he was very, very human in his time walking on earth. This is the hallmark for me of true salvation for someone who's interested in psychology. I'm working with the Synod as a member of the trauma support team. The bishop is really wanting to reach out to all people who are struggling with over two years of this pandemic. An effective trauma is a sense of aloneness. And you could say that the, the story of being driven from the Garden Eden, of Eden was a trauma. We were separated, we were alone. We're not understood or cared for when we're in trauma. Trauma shatters the beliefs and ethics that gave our lives meaning. We're disconnected. To alleviate the issues of trauma, we need secure attachments, close relationships full of compassion and trust. To build close relationships, we need intimacy, feeling close to one another. To feel close, we need to see each other as we truly are. To do this, we must become vulnerable. 
We must allow others to see our weaknesses as well as our strength. Maybe you can see where I'm going with this, with this week's gospel. God did this for us in Jesus Christ. Jesus walked among us, walked in the very dust we walk in, hungered as we hungered, and fully revealed himself to us, the divine and the human. What is touted as the shortest verse in the Bible, John 11:35, Jesus wept. He, how profoundly human is that? He allowed those who loved him to see all of his struggles. What can we learn from this? To heal from the pain and division of the last two years, we need to allow ourselves to be open to others but our joys and our struggles. Is that easy? Oh no, but it's necessary. And I think our congregation, our nation, our world needs this sort of healing. We all feel very disconnected after the last two years. God did all of this. In fact, we are following Jesus' example when he walked among us. He was in unity with the Son. Because of the vulnerability of the Son, we are in unity with the Father. Now we can find the same unity with one another. Is it possible? That is our challenge. Let us be vulnerable. Let us com have compassion. Let us show that we care for one another. This will bring us healing. Let us pray. Father, give us the strength from this point forward to show compassion for one another, to ex allow our others to see ourselves as we really are, our strengths and our weaknesses, as your son Jesus did for us 2,000 years ago. Father, help us to be in unity with you because you love each person here. Let us love one another. I ask this and that you bless all the mothers this week. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Please stand as you are able for the hymn of the day, which is number 764. Set free from captivity to sin and death, 
we pray to the God of resurrection for the church, people in need, and all of creation. Gentle shepherd, enable your church to respond to the voice of Jesus. Give us unfailing trust, unafraid to join in Jesus' work of renewing all things. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Feed your people at the table of creation. Prepare a safe place for those whose environments are dangerous or unhealthy, especially those making difficult journeys. Prosper your creation for the sake of every living thing. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Warm the hearts of all who celebrate and halt all who mourn on Mother's Day. Accompany those yearning to be mothers. Heal us, help us to heal from broken family relationships, and open us to receive your nurturing love from all who serve mothering roles in our lives. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Seek out those who weep while they await healing or consolation. Set people in their path who can provide the care they need and wipe away every tear from their eyes. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Inspire the words of the prophets and saints who employ innovative imagery to stretch our understanding. Send Christ to instruct us with motherly care. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Enfold us in the great multitude of saints from every nation, from all tribes and people and languages. Wash us in your saving grace every day, guiding us to your waters of life. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In your mercy, O oh God, respond to these prayers and renew us by your life-giving spirit. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The peace of, peace of Christ be with you always. Let us share that peace, socially distanced, with one another at this time. but now we'll pass the basket and also make sure you have one of the little uh, communion cups
going into the communion part of our service now, so please wait until we, you hear the instructions to open the little cup. Uh, we'll do it together. Let us pray. Living God, you gather the wolf and the lamb to feed together in your peaceable reign, and you welcome us all at your table. Reach out to us through this meal and show us your wounded and risen body that we may be nourished and believe in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. And now we will sing page 190. Please rise for holy hope. Page 190 in your red hymn book.
Christ dwells with us here. All who are hungry, all who are thirsty, come. Please, at this time, take the little piece of bread out of the cup. This is the body of Christ, broken for you. Please open the wine portion. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. generous God, for in this bread and cup we have tasted the new heaven and earth, where hunger and thirst are no more. Send us from this table as witnesses to the resurrection, that through our lives all may know life in Jesus' name. Amen. This is the point in the service where we ask for any announcements. Any council members like to? We have June 11th is our. Uh, June 11th is our warehouse sale. And um, you're all welcome to help or attend. Spread the word. June 11th. Um, if your name is not on my email list, I believe on the uh, bulletin there is my email address. Please send me an email if you would like to uh, be able to get our weekly emails. Um, I would like to uh, reach out to all the mothers and say how much I appreciate you very, very much. Um, I'm also remembering those of us who've lost our mothers and uh, we hold them close to our hearts today. Yes? Uh, this Friday, we're mm. having a women's lunch at 11.30 at the Mexican restaurant on Chambers and Eagle. So, women only. <laughs> Oh, I get the message. <laughs> Is that it? Do we have any others? Please rise for the blessing. May the Lord bless and keep you. May he bring you to peace. May he bring you to compassion. May he bring you to love. I bless you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And now for our closing hymn, number 860.